Reggie, would you introduce yourself uh, to my viewers? Uh, sure. Reggie Kumar, R-E-G-G-I-E-K-U-M-A-R, -E -E Southern California Edison spokesperson. Very, very good. And you're responding to my email to you uh, for an interview about the high fire season the battery uh, backup and uh, and uh, fewer shutoffs which is very important to all of us so uh, yes. go That's ahead you, so you, you are take you gonna it are going to be able to edit this or is this going to just be all one tape we'll be able to edit it somewhat oh great okay yeah so I guess the high fire season, do you expect it to come earlier this year? So our meteorologists and fire scientists are once again forecasting extreme fire weather conditions that will affect our communities located in high fire air let me say it again. So our 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 meteorologists and fire scientists are once again forecasting extreme fire weather conditions that will affect our communities located in high fire risk areas as early as May. Um, and let me just give you a little bit uh, more information. Uh, the 2020 wildfire season was the largest recorded in California's history as nearly 10,000 wildfires burned over 4.2 million acres. Wow. Uh, in SC yeah, in SCE's high fire risk areas, we experienced record dry fuel levels throughout the year from heat spells and lack of precipitation and a series of more significant Santa Ana wind events towards the end of the year. So we saw over 70% more red flag days in 2020 compared to 2019. Wow, wow, wow. That's uh, amazing. Of course, uh, we uh, and, and my viewers and readers, they... Um, are aggravated when the power goes off, even though they know the danger. But you, Edison is faced with a with <laughs> an outstanding uh, challenge in keeping the customer happy and keeping the fires down. I understand that. Yeah. So uh, to, to add to what you're saying, so public safety power shutoffs are a measure of last resort to reduce the risk of CAC wildfire to keep communities safe. We are working to reduce the need for PSPS events and ease the burden, particularly on frequently impacted communities when they are necessary. We fully recognize that PSPS events create hardship on our customers and communities, especially now with so many customers working and learning from home due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, it is our commitment that as we complete more grid hardening work, and improve operations that would result in raising thresholds where appropriate to reduce the number of customers de-energized due to the wildfire risk. Now, in the Agua Dulce Green Valley uh, Acton areas, uh, overall, the communities of Agua Dulce and Acton will see an 86% reduction in PSPS impacts across nine circuits if we can complete the grid hardening work by October of this year. Uh, these results assume the same weather conditions as last year. Um, I can also give you some information on Santa Clarita as well, but I'm, I'm assuming you want to focus on the Acton Aguadulce areas. Yes, yes, absolutely right. And uh, I know that you've been working out here. We've seen uh, your trucks, and and uh, we've we've seen uh, work going on, uh, hardening, as you say, and. Uh, but we have no good way of knowing how that will reduce the number of times the power gets turned off. So again, it all depends on the weather conditions and we will be working uh, through this time period. And by October, um, we believe, depending on if we can get the work done, that overall the communities, again, of Agua Dulce and Acton will see an 86% reduction in PSPS impacts across nine circuits. Again, that, that's all dependent on if we can complete the work by October. Um, and this is also assuming that uh, we have the same weather conditions as last year. Now, while this work is taking place, we will have to schedule maintenance outages 
in order to complete this important work, which cannot be safely done while the power is on. So customers will receive separate notices in advance for when these grid hardening maintenance will be conducted. This is will also include the scheduled starts and end times of the outage. Um, as far as you also wanted to know about um, the our battery program, right? Well, yes, I do. Um, I received yesterday a notice rebates to offset most or all costs to install a residential battery storage system. I think that is very uh, important to our people here. I went online and checked my address and it is uh, uh, suitable, but then I ran into some challenges about how to apply for it and who's uh, Providing the batteries, I uh, knew that Tesla had a battery, and I went in and looked at that, and they said, well, you have to buy solar panels to get the battery. But I already have solar panels. So that, that this is actually a separate battery um, program that we have. So what this battery program is, is we provide backup power uh, for our medical baseline customers. So SCE will be working to increase enrollment in customer programs that provide uh, resiliency and backup power and provide additional support to our most vulnerable customers by expanding the critical care backup battery program, it's known as CCBB, to all eligible medical baseline customers in addition to verifying delivery of public safety power shutoff notifications to all impacted medical baseline customers. Now, in 2020, more than 700 batteries were delivered to participating customers in the first six months of the program out of the initial 2,500 target population. Uh, in 2021, this year, SCE is expanding the critical care battery backup program to include all eligible medical baseline customers, not just critical care customers that are enrolled in our CARE program, which is the California Alternate Rates for Energy um, program, which reduces energy bills for eligible customers by about 30%, uh, and our FARA program, which is the Family Electric Rate Assistance, which reduces electric bills for qualified households by 18% and uh, reside in high fire risk areas. Uh, we will increase battery deployments to eligible customers and will conduct outreach to all eligible customers, that's approximately 12,000. Uh, we assume that approximately 30% of total eligible customers will choose to enroll this year, and um, the SCE will continue marketing and outreach efforts to reach as many eligible customers as possible. So if you are part of our medical baseline customer program, um, we can get you in touch with customer service to help um, get you one of these batteries if, if you're if you're eligible and you're part of this program do you know if you are a medical baseline customer no i'm not i'm not okay. personally but i know there are some in our area here that are and that'll yeah. be anxious to know about it but uh uh so the letter really is not directed to me it's medical baseline customers it's mainly medical baseline critical care however we do have rebates and I can provide that information um, for you as well. For regular um, customers, rebates for just for regular customers. For for yes, for regular customers. Um, let me hear some information here. So um, so we do have, like you mentioned, we do have the battery storage re rebate. Um, I can send you the link for more information. And then also we have portable power station and generator rebates. So it's. $50 rebate power stations and $300 to $500 rebates on portable generators for well water customers. Uh, I know that there are some well water customers in that area where you're located um, as well. Isn't that, isn't yes. that correct? Yes, yes, that's that's absolutely correct. And that was my second question about the generators because we have carried several articles about their availability. And, yeah, uh, I'm looking. I can add a little bit more about that as well. Yeah. So, uh, well water pump. A pilot targeting customers in high fire risk areas that depend on electricity to pump water to their home or property, like we just discussed. Uh, SCE designed the pilot to improve 
resiliency through portable backup generators with rebate amounts of $300 for non-CareFera customers and $500 for customers enrolled in CareFera limited to one rebate per SCE service account. Now, based on customer feedback, we discovered customers required larger generators to power their pumps, and as a result, we enhanced the product list to include larger portable generators, and SCE will continue to market this offering that includes educating our customers on how to safely connect and use generators. Well, that's good. Uh, how, how big are the generators now? They, that they've got. You know, I can send you a link. Uh, let me send you this um, uh, fact sheet that has a link to the information. And I don't know the specifics of the size of the generator, yeah. but the link that I have here probably does. Um, let me see. Yeah, you'd have, there's a lot of information here. You have to go through. There's several generators here. Yeah, you'd have to go through it and look. Right, right. Yes, no, uh, that's very, very important for customers here that have animals. And some have many animals and and have to provide lots of water to horses and dogs. And, uh, um, yeah. I also, wanted, I also wanted to provide you a little bit more information about what we're doing in the Agua Dulce area as well. Um, so SCE is creating resiliency zones. So in early 2020, SE conducted an analysis of circuits impacted by 2019 public safety power shutoffs. And SE used the results of the analysis to identify remote communities to initiate the development of a pilot uh, in 2020 to provide essential service sites, for example, stores, gas stations, in remote communities with temporary mobile backup power. So participating county and community leaders will identify essential sites and SCE will upgrade customer equipment to enable connection to temporary generators deployed by SCE during PSPS events. Now, to date, SCE has secured customer participant agreements for four sites in Agua Dulce and one in Cabazon. I know you don't, uh, don't need information about the, the location in Cabazon, but let me give you the information about uh, the Agua Dulce area. So yeah. there are three sites in Agua Dulce, uh, that include a gas station, mini mart, three businesses connected to one panel, a hardware store, restaurant and gift shop, and a pump house that supplies water to those businesses. Um, and then the other information is, is, is about Cabazon. But again, this year, SE will continue to engage uh, with county and community leaders to identify additional uh, essential service sites in these communities for resiliency zones. Okay, now should... Uh customers here approach you about that and ask to be so actually listed? our uh, local public affairs folks who work with city and county officials should be in contact with those folks and then uh, you, those officials will then reach out to, to those businesses but if, if those businesses want more information they, they are more than welcome to contact us and we will put them in contact with the appropriate uh, people uh-huh I see but we've already started the engagement process with um, with those businesses, and uh, we've already started that process. We've been in contact with those businesses. Um, our local public affairs folks have developed the relationships with the city and county officials who are in contact with those businesses. Uh -huh. So that process has already started. I yeah. see. So you, you're you telling me that you looked at their power usage ahead of time and then contacted them? That's that's correct. So yeah, we did, we conducted an analysis to identify these remote locations, and from that information, we identify. A, I'm sorry, three in Agua Dulce, one in Cabazon, and so the three sites in Agua Dulce include a gas station, mini market, three businesses connected to one panel, um, which in, includes a hardware store, restaurant, and a gift shop and a pump house that supplies water to those three businesses. So we've already been in contact with those sure. uh, locations. Sure. Well, uh, I've been out here since 1975, and Edison's been very good to me. Uh, in the early days, we had cutoffs, and I remember Fred Trueblood in the Lancaster office brought a generator and put it here so I could continue my weekly newspaper. 
And this this was a long, you know, this is years and years ago. But uh, there was nobody out here then except me, and he was gracious enough to bring that out. And that that helped. Uh, but they oh, were, that's good. They were redoing uh, generators, I guess, putting in bigger ones to allow for the growth that happened here. And so uh, they've been good to us. I know what that's like. Uh, I know I've heard... Uh, and we've had letters to the editor about people that are complaining about the power shutoffs, but uh, yeah, but uh, I I I, I, <laughs> I want to ask those people. Well, come up with a better idea. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I know I, we only have three more minutes left, but I just wanted to provide a little bit more info for you and okay. for your viewers and readers. So again, we have heard a clear message from customers, regulators, government officials, and public safety partners that the company must do more to reduce the need for public safety power shutoffs. I also want you to know that we've identified 72 circuits across our service area, across our 50,000 mile uh, service. We have identified 72 across our 50,000 square mile service area um, that will receive expedited grid hardening uh, these circuits experienced four or more de-energization since 2019, um, and these in-depth reviews have been completed, and now work has begun on these circuits, like the ones I mentioned to you in the Agua Dulce area. Um, so we have circuit-specific plans for these circuits um, in April, identifying work that will be completed by October, if we can get that work done, to reduce the need for PSPS events. Um, so... That, that's what we're working towards. We're working to get this work done by October. Again, like I mentioned to you, uh, overall the communities is, of Agua Dulce and Acton, after this work is complete, if this work is able to get complete, we will see an 86% reduction in PSPS impacts across nine circuits if we can get that work done by October. Um, so again, this fire season um, is will be definitely a extreme fire season. And, um, you know, it could start as early as May. Well, good. Uh, thank you very much for the information and keep up the good work. Uh, thank you. Let me send you, I'll send you these fact sheets too with the rebate information if you want that. Yes, please do. Okay. So your viewers and readers can, you know, click on the links and, and get that info. So, okay. All right, thank Randy. You for John, for uh, appreciate you fill, uh, spending some time with me today and let me know if you need anything else. Okay, no, I think uh, we just need more water, and I... Uh, <laughs> we definitely need some precipitation. Yeah, yes. I see my phone said the 40% chance of rain next Monday or Tuesday, so hopefully... <laughs> I hope we get it. We yeah. definitely need it. You know that. Yeah, yeah, all right. The gover governor already announced some of the counties are in a uh, drought situation. Yeah. Okay, I got to go. Take um, care. Okay, thanks, John. Okay, bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye.